Lesson number seven, relative motion. One-dimensional relative motion, riding the T. Imagine you're riding the green line in Boston and you're just sitting on the train. What if the train's moving at 10 meters per second? How fast an observer outside the train see you moving? Well, let's see, if the train's moving 10 meters per second and you're sitting stationary on the train, we would observe this motion. Thus, if the train's moving this way at 10 meters per second, and you have a velocity of zero on the train, the velocity seen by that observer is going to be the velocity of the car, which is 10, plus the velocity of you, which is zero, and see you moving at 10 meters per second. Thus, your speed is the same as a train speed. This is relative motion. Otherwise, your motion relative to someone on the train would be zero. No one on the train would see you moving, but someone outside of the train would see you moving at 10 meters per second. We add these motions together like vectors. The velocity of the car as a vector plus the velocity of the person as a vector will equal the relative velocity or the velocity as seen by a stationary observer. Now what if you see your stop and start walking towards the front of the car? So let's say the car is moving at 10 meters per second this way and you start to walk at 2 meters per second in the same direction as the car. Well, as you can see, you now see some relative motion of that person walking. Thus, the velocity of the car, which was 10 meters per second, and if you're now walking towards the front at 2 meters per second, that means someone on the sidewalk would see you walking at 12 meters per second. The combined motion of the car moving at 10 and you moving at 2. Lastly, what if you got to the front of the car and realized that was not your stop? So as you walked up here, you then started to turn and walk the other way at a different speed. So let's say the car is moving this way at 10 meters per second, and you turn and walk maybe back a little more quickly to get your seat back at 4 meters per second in the opposite direction. Well, let's call it negative 4 since it's in the opposite direction. Thus the car would be moving at 10 meters per second, you would be walking backwards at negative 4 meters per second, so somebody would see you walking 6 meters per second relative to them on the sidewalk. Two-dimensional relative motion, flying a plane. Just as in the example with the T in one dimensional, let's look at if our airplane was flying due east at 200 meters per second and was encountering a tailwind of 30 meters per second also east. Well, you could see that we would combine these motions together and get a resultant motion of the plane of 230 meters per second to the east. But what if the airplane was encountering a headwind? That is, the wind was going against the motion of the aircraft. So here you could see 200 meters per second east plus 30 meters per second west would give us a different result and that would give us 170 meters per second, but still east, not enough to overcome the velocity of the plane. But what if we chose to fly the airplane at a right angle to that 30 meter per second wind, and we took our airplane and we aimed north into that 30 meter per second east wind? Well, even though we're aiming north, you can see that the plane is going to drift to the northeast. Well, what would be that amount of drift? Otherwise, what would be the angle? If we add these velocities as vectors and say, here's the original velocity of the airplane, the he original heading, 200 meters per second north, and that combined with the velocity of the wind would give us the resultant velocity of the plane. Otherwise, what an observer on the ground would see, and also that angle. Here we need to add these velocities as vectors. So a 200 meter per second north airplane added together with a 30 meter per second east wind and that's going to give our velocity of our airplane relative to the ground which is also a vector. Well to find the magnitude of that velocity we would just need to take 200 squared plus 30 squared via Pythagorean theorem and take the square root. If you pause the video for a moment and do that math You'll see that the velocity of the plane then turn, turns out to be, hold on, 
uh, 202.24 meters per second. Now if we want to find this angle uh, right here, otherwise the heading, we can use trig and maybe we do tangent of that angle is going to equal uh, opposite over adjacent, so 30 meters per second over 200 meters per second. Remembering that the angle then is the inverse tangent of 30 over 200. If you pause for a moment and do that, we get an angle of about 9 degrees rounding up. If we did that heading, that again would be 9 degrees east of north. So our final answer would be 202.24 meters per second at 9 degrees east of north. Two-dimensional relative motion, crossing a river. Let's say you're in this boat here and you want to get across the river. Well, if there's no current, you could get in your boat and just power right across the river and end up directly on the other side opposite of where you started. But what if there was a current pushing you down the river and you aimed your boat directly across? Well, would you end up directly across the river from where you started? Well, probably not, since the river would push you downstream by some amount. Let's look at how vectors can describe that motion. Well, if we aim our boat directly across the river here and go in this direction, if the current is downstream to the right in this direction, we can see that the resultant motion of the boat would be this diagonal vector here. Let's label some velocities here. So say in your boat you're traveling at a velocity of maybe 10 meters per second across the river. Let's say the velocity of the current is about 3 meters per second downstream. And then our question is, what's the velocity of the boat relative to the ground? So let's write these vectors out here. Otherwise, the velocity of the boat relative to the water, which is the speed you would see uh, on the speedometer in the boat, that vector added together with the velocity of the water relative to the ground, so the current, would give us the resultant motion of the boat. So that would be the velocity of the boat relative to the ground. So a, a shoreline observer would see you moving at this speed. Let's put our numbers in. If this is 10 meters per second, let's say that's north, and the velocity of the water or relative to the ground or current is 3 meters per second east, well, what's the resultant velocity of the boat relative to the ground? So here we're going to have to add these velocities as vectors and do this as Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the hypotenuse side is and then sine, cosine, or tangent to find the angle. So let's do that right now. If we take 10 squared meters per second squared plus 3 meters per second squared equals v squared, if we do that out, that's going to be a 109 square root and a velocity of 10.44 meters per second. And if we go ahead and use tangent of theta, that'll help us find the angle right here. We can do that as opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 3 over 10. And hence the angle is going to be the inverse tangent of 3 over 10. And that gives us an angle of about 17 degrees. Now again, we could give that proper heading and we could say for our final answer that the velocity would be 10.44 meters per second and that would be at an angle of 17 degrees. I would call that east of north. Thank you for watching and see you in class.